I would like to welcome our honorable speaker for this evening, Dato S. R. Zulkifli, the principal partner of design cost consultant, Sandra Enverhat. I am Nur Iza. And I'm Trina Shaira, as your MC. We hope that this lecture session will give you plenty of new knowledge and will be useful in the future. We would like to start this program with the Doa recital led by Fazrin Ben Inas. Al-Fatiha. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala shafil anbiya wa al-musaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jma'in. Allahumma inna ka falatun azim. Inna ka sami'un alim, inna ka rafurun rahim, inna ka rabbul arshil azim, inna ka barul jawadu karim. Ya Allah, engkau lah yang mempunyai segala kepujian. Engkau lah yang berhak menerima segala kepujian. Engkau lah yang berhak menerima segala kesyukuran. Engkau lah yang memiliki segala pemerintahan. Di tangan engkau segala kebajikan. Pada engkau lah kembali segala urusan. Allahumma ya karim ya rahim, tucurilah rahmat dan rahimu. Ke atas majlis The Economics in Plant and Machinery Case Studies from the Construction Industry yang diadakan pada hari ini. Berkatilah ia dari awal hingga akhirnya. Ya fa'al ya nubir. Ya kami juga memohon perlindungan daripadamu dari segala perkara yang boleh mencacilakan majlis kami dan daripada segala perkara yang menelaikan kami daripada berbuat taat kepadamu. Kepadamu jua kami serah segala usan kami. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillah rabbil alamin Amin amin ya rabbal alamin thank you Fazrin for leading the dua recital Without further ado we would like to invite Dr Peniel Ang Sun Eun as the moderator for this evening session the floor is yours Right, thank you very much uh, to my two beautiful MCs. Right, so once again, we want to welcome everyone to the adjunct professor lecture series slot three. Right, we have a total of four slots. So, uh, good afternoon uh, to our honorable speaker, Datuk Zul. How are you? Dah makan? Oh, dah. Sempat tak makan tadi? Dah kan? You managed to rest for a while? Yeah, yeah, dah. I do. From the morning, morning session. Yeah. <laughs> Background pun dah tukar, Datuk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you, Dato, once again for um, uh, grazing this uh, session and this uh, but to be to be again a few slots and sessions. So um, we also like to welcome my dear colleagues. Uh, they're all here, and also of course uh, our wonderful students. Right. So uh, for your information, since some of you uh, maybe may not know Dato Zo. So uh, Dato Zul has been with us uh, at least seven to eight years ago. Eight years, I would say, even before I'm a lecturer in FDK. So Dato Zul has been um, guiding and walking us through uh, ever since the, this program has kick-started, right? He's been very, very, very helpful in uh, giving a lot of input. Okay, so um, since many of you will be listening to Dato Zul for the first time, so allow me to share a little bit on his background. Okay, so just uh, uh, Dato Zul, Right, he is the principal partner in design cost consultants, right, where he has devoted his practice to construction project development for the last decades. Okay, decades, you know. Okay, he's a fellow of the Royal Institute of Survey in Malaysia, or we call it F FRISM, a member of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyor, United Kingdom, MRICS, a member of the Royal Institute of Surveyor Malaysia, MRISM, and registered with the Board of Quantity Surveyor Malaysia as a consultant QS. Right, so his recent activities include providing project management consultancy service, serving as an expert witness for construction dispute, and sharing his broad knowledge in the construction industry as an adjunct professor with us, okay, FDK. So, Dato Zul has worked on hundreds of building and infra projects with a total value of more than 4.4, not million, yeah, 4.4 billion ringgit. He has also received numerous awards for his expertise, 
among them are excellence awards from UNESCO Asia Pacific Heritage for the Culture Heritage Conservation on Stadium Nudeka in 2010, and Anugra Waja Excellent Awards as a sole proprietorship or partnership consultant from the board of QS Malaysia in 2014. So, the panjang you hear me introduce Dato. So you can, I believe you will all agree with me that he's an all rounder. Okay, Dato Zo, he's a quantity. He's a buyer, he is a consultant, he's a project manager, he's a contractor, even a law arbitrator. And you know what? Something that you may not know, but I will tell you, he's also a restaurant owner. Okay. <laughs> so he's really an all rounder. If he later we have time, ask uh, Dr. to share a bit more of his experience to you. Right. So, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking forward for this lecture, right, and if you are super duper ready, if you're super duper ready, please unmute your mic or even type in the chat box saying, I'm ready, Dato, bring it on. Right? Okay, so well, let's welcome our dear Dato Zul with a round of applause to speak on the economics in plant and machinery case studies from the construction industry. Let's welcome Dato. Right, you can do the round of applause in Zoom as well. Okay, thank you, Dato. Okay. okay. My turn now? Yes, please, Dato. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, good afternoon to all lecturers. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fanyal. And then uh, to my uh, beloved student who are attending this uh, lecture, uh, has been uh, given the topic to me. I would like to... Uh, uh, straight away go to the slide that I prepared. Dato, will you share your slide or do you want me to share for you? Share. Yeah, we, 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 we are able to do it. It's okay. Okay. I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm interested by my, my daughter. Okay. Okay. Now, plant and machineries. Then uh, uh, all this uh, introduction uh, of my talk is already probably uh, made known to you much earlier by, the, by Dr. Daniel or any other lecturer. So basically, I just uh, browse through this one. Uh, the term plant refers to machinery, equipment, and apparatus used for an industrial activity. That's basically the simple uh, meaning of it. Uh, typically, in construction, plant refer to heavy machineries and equipment used during construction works. So anything uh, that you use for construction work other than human being, to me, there's all plants, okay? And for uh, today on the introduction, I will talk about uh, five uh, component, the planning part of it, the selection, uh, the acquisition of the plant and machineries, the operation cost and maintenance cost. Sorry. Sorry, Dato. Sorry, yeah. Dato. Uh, have you shared the slide already? Yeah. Shared, I mean, shared in the in the Zoom. You want me to do it for you? Oh, we already shared. Hey, I don't see it. Already, Dr. Oh, the other. Okay, okay, okay. I thought I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, other. Okay. Sorry for the hiccup. <laughs> and it's okay. After these five uh, introduction uh, of uh, plant and machineries, I will go to two case study uh, to represent how this plant and machinery in construction is actually being used and how it's being planned uh, uh, to use it. Next. Planning objective basically is uh, why we use uh, plant and machineries. Of course, is to expedite the process of construction because the time uh, given uh, during construction stage is very limited and uh, it is only can uh, possibly be carried out with the assistance of uh, plant and machineries, because the output produced by them uh, is much greater. And of course, it uh, expedite the process from A uh, to Z that we intend to do. So plant and machinery were deployed in construction first to expedite the process of construction activity. So that's basically the idea why people use plant and machineries. And of course, the other part is to sometime carry out the work which is impossible or take a long time to do it if you use manually. 
Next. Selection criteria. Of course, when we want to use plan uh, in the construction, we must first understand what type of development, whether it's landed or high rise. Because landed uh, property or landed construction activities uh, differ uh, kinds of plan to be used compared to high rise. So we must understand, even though high rise also, we have to check uh, what is the uh, numbers of story height or total height of the building. Because uh, the capacity of the plan to, uh, to be able to be deployed efficiently, we rely on the types and the height of the building and also the broadness of the building itself. So all those criteria is very important, not just because it's multi-story, you, you must use a, a tower crane. Or maybe use tower crane becomes so expensive to do it, we must deploy a combination of a crawler crane and tower crane, or at all, we don't need even the tower crane. So it all uh, has to be uh, studied carefully so that uh, we deploy the right plan for the right price, for the right task, and for the right times of usage, and for the right output intended to be. And then, then the number two is a site constraint and accessibility. Not all the plan, even though we intend to use it, may be able to be deployed at a site, especially if it is going to be a very constrained site uh, in a brownfield area, for instance, in a town whereby left and right at the, at the site of the site is already constructed with the building. Then the movement of the plant is restricted. And the time sometimes in town, like Kuala Lumpur, not all the time they are allowed to use mobiles, uh, machine or plant to be deployed at a site in a constrained area, in a congested area. So these are also has to be taken into consideration. The suitability of the plant to be used during daytime, the suitability of the plant to be used during the nighttime, and the right of size of the plant to be used so that when the plant is arrived at the site, there's a proper place for them to be placed. And with the place being identified, they are able to deliver the intended, uh, what it calls, uh, uh, usage or uh, usage or uh, what do you expect for the plant to, to help you in your work. So all those has to be calculated. The place must be proper. The place for the, there's a place for the plant to uh, assess to the site. There's a place for the plant to, what they call, uh, going out from the site after they have done their job. Uh, because not only the constraint come or came from the uh, building, neighboring building, but it also may come from the activity at the site itself. Sometimes they want, they cannot come in because you are still uh, do the construction work for the road. And while you do the construction work for the road, you also digging part of the road to allow some part work to be carried out. So you have blocked the, uh, the process of ingress and egress to the site. So the accessibility of this require you sometimes to replan the site or create a temporary structure or create temporary access so that the accessibility are available for the plant to perform at the place you feel that the plant can perform to the maximum. Size of site also, as I mentioned just now, that I mentioned, uh, if it is too small, sometimes we have to be very careful with the usage. Sometimes may not practical at all to use the normal mobile. It has to be static. For instance, the mobile crane, uh, the tower crane could be the most efficient way because it's static at one place and can uh, move uh, the boom to carry out 360 degree uh, position of lifting uh, of materials. Then the, the other part is sequence of construction works that also very important for the planners to, uh, to study that the, uh, the sequence of construction work will rely will uh, determine what kind of plan to be deployed at what right times and how long it required uh, to be there. Because some plan sometimes may require uh, what they call expected to perform or carry out two or three tasks at the times of deployments. So uh, for instance, at the times of concreting, they were required to lift up the concrete, uh, what they call the concrete, uh, item, uh, the concrete material from the, uh, uh, what they call concrete mixer uh, that arrived by lorry. But uh, sometimes there is a, because of traffic jam and whatnot, uh, there is a lap of, of gaps of uh, usage of the plant. So we cannot uh, let the, 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 what called the mobile crane station there without doing anything because the cost of hiring is very expensive. 
So at that particular time, it is best for the particular plant expected to get, to lift up some other material that intended to be lifted up. For instance, reinforcement, formwork, or brick brick wall, or brick layer, or brick uh, oh, sorry, or bricks, or any other material that within that uh, space uh, of uh, what they call free time, then the plant can be used. Uh, two other things. I have I've experienced this for my own job as a con as a contractor. So I make sure that uh, the position of the plant is uh, right, so that the uh, the concrete mixer came uh, to be able to carry out the duty for concreting. At the very same time, at the times of delivery, one day before that, I'll make sure that the loading and unloading of the material were within the reach of this uh, plant. So that any free time, I'll make sure they will lift up this uh, material. So multitasking, reducing the cost for me, then that's how we manage uh, the site. And then after lifting weight and distance, this is especially so if the the material to be hoist is a very high, is a very heavy, or the building is too high. So. There is uh, what I call a different degree of ab uh, ability of the plant to hoist. So we must understand based on the recommendation, recommendation made by the uh, manufacturer or the distributor or the one who uh, that you hire the plant and machineries to advise the size, capacity uh, of the plant that you want to utilize. So I, I'll talk a lot about that and I will reduce further on the, uh, the information. Uh, of course, this is very simple. If you plant and machinery, basically you have three uh, options to, uh, to, to procure. One, you buy yourself. If you have a lot of money and then uh, you don't have, uh, you don't intend to use the money to roll out your, your what they call your uh, capital, then you may buy some other plant. And having some other plant on yourself, and if you have a lot of job, it's much cheaper and give value for money. And of course, the next one is renting. Renting more kinds of plant where we are using it uh, in a short term basis, on daily basis, hourly basis, or probably on weekly basis. But leasing is another process, uh, uh, like buying the thing because uh, you own the plant, you control the plant, you, you can use it wherever you want it over a period of time, probably three years, four years, or five years within the leasing period. At the end of it, you will have to hand over the plant to the lot lessor, uh, then added, uh, to the lessee, then uh, by that time, the plant is not yours, but you can use to the maximum of it without worry about whether the plant is available for you to rent. So all these things uh, uh, are the three options based on my uh, research. When I was a student last time, uh, this is my topic. So I found out the leasing is the best option for a contractor to obtain plant to be used at the site. Of course, the operation cost is comprised of uh, the plant operator cost. This is a, uh, uh, if you have your own tower crane or you lease tower crane or you rent tower crane, the operator cost is very, very expensive because they have to work uh, by shift. Every, uh, every four hours, they have to change uh, operator, sometimes every two hours, if it is a very heavy uh, work. Otherwise, it's every four hours we have to change. and. For one tower crane, we may require two or three operator, and uh, the salary is very, very expensive. So you have to be very sure that uh, uh, enough thing to be lifting, and that the lifting cost must be well uh, captured in the cost of the work. And then, of course, the fuel cost. Uh, please be advised that the fuel cost of the diesel to be used. We cannot buy the diesel from the uh, uh, what it calls uh, pump uh, station petrol station. We have to buy diesel from a company who sell on commercial price. By drum, they, come, uh, they, 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 they brought it to the site. So this is very expensive. The price is much higher than the one that published by the government uh, using diesel for cars. Not many people may be not aware about this one. Moving and handling costs. You, uh, once you uh, bring in the tower crane, you cannot simply dismantle and put somewhere else if you found the thing is not efficient or having problems. So uh, you have to really study uh, even all the plant. 
that before it's being brought to the site, you must make sure uh, what kind of plant, where it's supposed to be stationed, and what kind of uh, job they're supposed to do, what kind of output do you expect them to do, and based on the output by the plant, divided by the cost of hiring it, then you will be able to uh, get the unit cost, and that unit cost will be based on what would be the budget right for that particular item in the price or the bill of quantities that you price in the tender. So this is the uh, uh, a process that uh, one of the de uh, deciding factors, what kind of plan, plan to be used uh, in order to obtain or to optimize the uh, profit on the part of the contractor. And then the operation cost is so subject to the number of operation hours, type of equipment, location and working condition. And then uh, maintenance cost, if you just hire the thing, the maintenance cost will be, not, will be nothing to worry about. It's all a factor in, in the rental cost. But if you lease and buy the thing, it is something that you must uh, consider. So the plant from China, of course, lower in cost, uh, but maintenance sometimes uh, not that cheap, or the reliability sometimes also uh, questionable. But if you get it from Japan, it's much higher. But uh, if you don't fully utilize it, it's become very expensive. That's why many people now buy tower crane from China. After, the, after two, three years of usage, they just uh, zero rise the whole thing and start uh, sell it as a scrap iron only because of the reasonable cost of obtaining it. And if you buy from uh, German, for instance, or US, it's a much more expensive, not only because the plant is that, uh, uh, what they call sophisticated, is due to the fact that the, our exchange rate causing uh, uh, importing of this uh, plant is so expensive and the maintenance part also becomes so uh, expensive. So all those, uh, the country come from the efficiency, the expected yeah, the usage, the lifespan of the plant and the output and the uh, efficiency must be all be considered in uh, deciding uh, what best plan whether to purchase, to hire, or to lease. Thanks. Uh, I think this one, I don't want, not going to talk much about it. It's not that uh, serious. Okay. Uh, selection of plant and machinery, I mentioned to you just now that uh, as of current uh, situation, uh, the project manager, where you are expected as my top, top this morning as a, what they call, uh, uh, technologies, engineer. These are the area that uh, you may play an important role and it's already been included in your syllabus, this plant and machinery, which I happy to, to note that. So if you were be at a site as a project manager, especially if you work with the contractor, you must be able to take care of the one that I mentioned just now. So you must be able to plan the plan based on the overall programs of the works, one. Second thing, you must be able to find and advise your uh, employer on the financial planning of it, whether the uh, the purchase, uh, the lease, or the uh, uh, what they call the hiring or the plan, must be based on the financial uh, position of the client and the amount of burden for the client to pay over a period of time. So, if the client have limited uh, resources in terms of finance, you may opt to the other option because they want to use the money probably for buying material and then don't mind to pay over a period of time by way of leasing uh, on the plant so that uh, the, uh, the, what it calls, uh, that does not stressful the financial uh, resource of them. So this is uh, another area that you may advise your, your, your client. And the other part is that you also can advise your client uh, the type of plant the cost of it, the quality of the selection, and what plan to be used out of uh, two or three plan of different types and capacity that can perform the same job. So you can advise them instead of buying A, instead of using A, you said using B, even using B more expensive than A, but the output expected from B is much better when you divided that into a cost, unit cost as provided for in the bills or quantities and being priced by the contractor, this found to be that extra cost of paying extra for B, selection of B, may bring betterment to the client. And you also would like to provide also the ability 
of the uh, what it calls uh, maintenance crews of the uh, of the plant suppliers. They are record. They are track record. Or also, you might find out that if any at all credit being provided for by the plant and machinery suppliers to you, that will help your client. That also could be become a factor that you should consider in your selection and advising you. So this is the uh, the, the one of the most important uh, criteria uh, of uh, managing the site. Resources, managing resources is very, very important, <coughs> especially now when um, most of the uh, directions of the project is using IPS uh, and tight schedule of completion where human uh, or labor has been reduced tremendously, then the plant and machineries may take up probably 20 to 30% of the overall cost. So if project were 100 million, we are talking about a cost of 20 million to 30 million will be used for plant and machineries. And you are actually managing 20 to 30 million. If you can bring 10% uh, efficiency to your employer, you are actually bringing extra profit of two to three million to the employer. Again, your salary probably five to 10,000 ringgit. They will value you so much if you are able to do this one. So you must understand this carefully, must learn about the plant and machinery, must understand the technical aspect of it, must understand about the maintenance of it, must understand who are the suppliers, the reliability, the cost and whatnot. As a student now, not just listen for what I have said, but you must make further study so that you can become all round good project manager at site. Thanks. So by project reference case study number one, this has been used. Uh, uh, okay, last time, last time when I was uh, uh, giving lecture, I'm also referring to the same project, but the project has not yet been completed. But this project now has been uh, uh, completed. Uh, you can see, you can see the huge, uh, the huge building over here. This is CIQ Bukit Kayu Hitam. Overall development uh, here is about seventy acres, seventy-three acres. Uh, the overall cost is about four hundred million. Uh, Ten years ago, the price is four hundred million. Even I think now it's more uh, expensive. So what I'm going to uh, explain today is that I'm uh, using based on method statement produced by a company named Nagatron, who is the specialist uh, steel structure who undertake the main roof, which comprise of, uh, this is the main roof, which is about uh, eight story high from the ground here. And then we have a, a second layer roof, which is here and here. It's a huge structure. From here to here is about half a kilometer long. Yeah, half a kilometer long, about nine story height, eight to nine story height, uh, this building. And we have a no, uh, what I call single span uh, building with a three dimension uh, steel structure. And for this project, uh, I'm proud to say that uh, I'm the uh, uh, project lead consultant. As I mentioned this morning, Anybody can become a project lead consultant or project manager. Project manager, they are not no longer being uh, determined by profession, engineers, and that kind of thing. You at uh, UTHM given the opportunity, all rounder knowledge, all round knowledge from contract, procurement, construction, uh, designs, uh, fluids. Uh, you know, you understand. You also learn about environmentals uh, and services that make you become. A person's qualified, even uh, I'm as example as a country surveyor who undertake this as one of the project that I've uh, become the project lead consultant. I'm leading uh, uh, teams of consultant, notable consultant, you know, uh, for this project. Thanks. So uh, this is the uh, the building from the other angle. You can see that uh, from here right up to the top. Here is a 500 meters or half a kilometers away. This is the top tiers. This is the uh, second tiers. Of course, we have so many other roof uh, for the other building that's not important. I only would like to talk uh, these kinds of building, the, di the difficulties of uh, design, the difficulties of constructing, the difficulties of installing. So this is one of a kind 
that uh, in Malaysia. This, this photo is a distort. Distort uh, is, is supposed to be very tall. Uh, because of that, uh, you may not be able to. I'm very sorry for that. I'm not good in computer. So what I'm talking about, uh, these are the structure, the, uh, the top part of the structure. And uh, some part at the end here is the uh, second layer. This is the one that I said from top of this one right up to the here is about eight to nine story high. But uh, it doesn't show well in this in this photo. I'm very sorry. Thanks. Okay, so this is also another distort uh, uh, distort uh, photos. You can imagine that uh, this is a three dimension. Eh? This is three dimension uh, roof trusses using a hollow section over there, and then it's spanning from here right up to the other side. It's a very big. It's a very big span. Uh, it's a very big span. Uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, from one column to from this column right up to the other column. So this is a very challenging design. So let me let, let me now move forward. How this actually being uh, carried out at site? Okay, next. For this uh, work, for this work, as I mentioned to you, this is the top part of the uh, main row. This is the lower part from the cross section of the design. So we have two lower parts. So they have divided this into, uh, on the top part of this one, into three segments. Segment one, from here to here. Segment two is in the middle. Segment three, is towards the other end. Why are they dividing this into three segments? Because not possible for them to leave uh, the whole uh, section over here in one go because uh, mobile cranes are not in the position to leave uh, that uh, the whole section because are very heavy. At the same time, that the uh, the radius uh, allowable for 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 the uh, uh, crane to be used to lift up this also. Uh, being reduced to not more than 12 meters. That's the reason why they have designed it in such a way that this divided into three and created a connector, one and two connector, so that it become one single uh, structure, this one. Uh, they are using Tecla uh, design uh, uh, eight in order to arrive. This is not easy. Uh, you ask all the engineers, it is a double, uh, section of uh, roof trusses is already difficult. This is a three-dimension uh, structure, much, much more difficult. So this is, uh, I'm as a QS, you can imagine, managing this kind of work. Then you as a technologist engineer, you could do it better. You, have, you, you could be able to do it better than me uh, as far as this concern. I trust you, student. Uh, you should live up to the standard and be proud of yourself, of your profession that you are choosing, and hopefully you will become the one that we want to manage the site in the future. Thanks. So the upper truss is fabricated with a circular hollow section, CHS, comprising of three segments I mentioned just now. And item two, you can see that each segment has been divided into a three of different kinds of weight. The first segment is about five ton, the second segment is four ton, and the third segment is 5.4 ton. You, I already mentioned this just now. Thanks. So what the uh, preliminary works, eh? Nagatron Engineering is one of the leading, uh, leading uh, uh, contractor uh, as far as steel structure is concerned. They have done a lot uh, of works uh, for steel. That's why this is one of the uh, uh, method statements submitted uh, to me. But I have, of course, uh, a minute for today's lecture. Uh, information gathering and sourcing. So it's very important that uh, the one who plan must gather the information. Uh, the information needed is that the ingress, egress of the site, the ability of the particular uh, place that you want to put. This heavy uh, equipment is very heavy. And then once the station there, they lift up things, 
something just now is about five ton. You can imagine a five ton uh, load has been further load to the to the load, the static load of the uh, the plant. So combined load is very heavy. If the ground is not uh, prepared well, they may not be able uh, to carry out the work. So uh, it is uh, a challenge for me at a particular time to balance out the uh, ingress for the plant to come in and a place for the plant to stay uh, must be in such a way able to take up the load. So that uh, it also causing some problem for the infrastructure because if there are big station there, some of the work are not be able to do it. So these are the planning of the of the work must be done. At the same time, so they also must allow and permit lorry to bring in the section at any one time. And it's a long lorries uh, that being used. And this also cause uh, what they call a havoc at site because there's no other plant uh, also deploy. At the same time, there are other work also to be carried out. So it's a very challenging uh, to manage this over the period of uh, short time at the very same time the uh, originals uh, the uh, existing uh, ciq complex is in operation uh, so this is a very challenging but i'm glad that uh, uh, for my client this is the best project they have ever completed on time and then uh, and uh, the first project by them that the project lead consultant is not the engineer or the architect I'm not put masuk bakul langkat sendiri lah. I just want to share with you that uh, we can do it. Then uh, two from approved steel structure and architectural drawing has established the following. So they will find out the what is with, what is the maximum height is 28 meter. What is a uh, radius allowable for the crane? In order for the crane to allow to be allowed uh, to bring in the uh, to lift up the the plant, they study uh, the crane is efficiently can operate due to the constraint of the site within the radius of uh, 12 meters only. They cannot go beyond that. I mean, that's the reason why the section has been divided into three because the crane are unable to deliver, hoist and deliver of radius more than 12 meters. That's their study. Uh, site survey to be carried out. This I already mentioned to you, item three. Uh, is this also advisable that you bring in the operator because the operator sometimes will provide you an input based on their experience even though we are engineers we are professional i always believe in my uh, uh, projects uh, my uh, lines of duty i even talk to the uh, laborer talk to the kepala talk to the uh, foreman uh, sometimes they know best how to carry out things and they will provide a very good input sometime to us that we never knew so don't go there with a white uh, helmet think that you are already the best and you are on top of the world uh, like professor chan said today when you become project manager you are as if little king at the side no uh, tony fernandez has advised that uh, he also go to the ram uh, technician to understand their their work so and listen to the uh, down people because they are part and parcel of the success story of ours so basically uh, uh, one of the criteria that you must have besides being a professional you must be humble enough uh, to learn even from somebody who not who have not a chance to go to university so this is one of the quality you must have you must be good to people because people will share with you so human factors is one of the success story that one must have uh, to be successful thanks it's already uh, also these are the thing that uh, in the, in diagrammatic form you can see that uh, uh, you can see this is the first section that's how they lift it up that's how they lift it up and then you can imagine as I said why the 12 meter radius is an issue because they already have this structure because beside without that structure they are not able to put the main roof. This is a supporting structure. And they also have this structure already constructed at a particular time. So between this structure to the other structure is a, a, a very short distance. And it's then the that's the reason why we have, they only have this uh, space about 12 meter. Uh -huh. I, 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 one section. 
two section. I, yeah, I organize antar ke atas. I hear the boys, eh? you see. Okay, next. And then uh, uh, we look at crane capacity selection uh, procedure. They found out that the mobile crane that able to undertake this job with or based on the capacity has been discussed is about eight tons, you know. And then based on the uh, uh, what do you call a summary of information extracted from slide two and three, thrust assembled weight is five point five <coughs> tons, working radius twelve meters, light. Uh, Lifting height is at 12, 28 meters. So this is the uh, uh, what they find out and what is suitable plan to be used is a specific capacity of 80 tons. Next. Uh, then uh, based on 80 ton uh, requirement, they must be able to have uh, 30 to 36 meters <coughs> boom. Uh, projection and then uh, the boom angle cannot be that low it has to be within 60 to 70 degree so quite a straight position you know it's not uh, what they call uh, bend down too much because the moment they bend down too much the ability to lift is reduced as far as weight is concerned then they've come up 30 to 36 meter as far as boom is concerned then the degree of the angle of the booms is between 60 to 70 so quite uh, uh, what they call uh, 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 high angles. Eh? It's not uh, very much be able to bend down the the, the plan or the, the boom. Sorry. Next. So these are the study. I I left this uh, uh, slide to Dr. Panel. So probably uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, the crane. So this is ninety degrees. 90 become 80, 70, that kind of thing. And then the lower the part, the higher the, the width, the, the further the up on the radius, the lower the rate. The higher the boom, you can see 70 something maybe like, like this, like, like what you can see now, or the maximum is like that. So it's like that. So this is the one the plant will deploy. Uh, this is already 30 degrees. So we're talking about 70 just now. So it's something not more than this, to lift up from down here to the top of it. So these are the uh, the chart provided by the many by the plant suppliers to indicate to you what kind of plant be able to deliver and to what height. Uh, and uh, this may be, and you can see here is a 12 meter over here. So it's only up to this level, not even going up. You cannot use the, the extra boom over here and 28 meter height. So this uh, maybe you can discuss with, the, with, the, uh, with your lecture later. Next, uh, this is uh, from the from the study of the schedule shown just now. Uh, you can see that thirty meter uh, boom only be able to raise uh, to increase fifteen point two ton. If you increase the boom to thirty six meter, reduce the capability to lift up to thirteen point eight. If you go to forty meter, it further reduce to twelve point eight ton. As a conclusion. The crane capacity of ton is sufficient to lift the thrust weight of 5.5 ton to the height of 30 meter. That's the conclusion they're using. So they are, uh, why is it only 5.5 ton? 30 meter is 15.2 tons. They allow a safety factor of 2.5 to 3. They cannot use the maximum of, uh, even though A said 30 meter, 15.2 ton, but they only use 30 meter for 15.5, which is one third, with a three times or 2.7 times safety factors and that also must be taken into consideration in uh, your design decision in using the plant okay uh, on the other hand this is the lifting belt but while uh, uh, looking into that matters you are also uh, uh, required to measure and study the bell used in order for the bell and the hook to undertake uh, 5.5 tons without failure. There's a lot of cases of failure on the belt and the hook. So there's a calculation to it. Next. Uh, that uh, 
you can refer to this one with your lecturer because they are giving you what kind of hook based on what kind of tan and then what kind of material used as the uh, uh, these are all the hook and its accessories these are all the belts <coughs> that uh, being used for uh, typical types uh, of uh, width intended to so i have uh, finished the uh, uh, case study number 1 I would like to have a break uh, with a question if uh, there is any, because the project case study number two is a totally different thing. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. <coughs> Dato. Uh, yes. So, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, students, uh, would you want to ask Dato any question regarding the first case study? It's about the mobile crane. Uh, you can see that there is this uh, working radius of 12 meter only, right? So um, it's actually very, very limited. Chan meter is like super short. It's just like almost, how many? Years? 40 years. It's very yeah. So that's why I think uh, y'all can ask Tato for any question regarding mobile crane also can. So if not later, Masud, the second case study is different, right? So please feel free. Anyone? Never mind if you don't have it's okay. Mm. Okay, or maybe they can ask later. So. Uh, all right let me have a, a, a drink first. yes please that thought rest for a while um that thought i just want to ask right uh, because you're mentioning that uh the designers have to take into consideration the uh, the design to divide into three segments meaning to say that uh before that they have already designed there's this uh what they call supporting structure is it below so that is the main thing that hinders them for for like from doing it in a one whole big piece. Is it? There's a, 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 a three uh, uh, four reason. One of the reason is uh, the the construction uh, what do you call it? the assembling uh, done in uh, Klam, and then oh. uh, the, the installation is to be done at uh, CIQ Bukit Kayu Town. Okay. So one of the reason why they divide it into three segments is a transportation issues. Logistics, yeah. Okay. Logistics issues to bring from Klam to. To see, I give it, I that's one because it's mm. permissible uh, at one length for a 40 or we are using maybe 60 special permission to be obtained from uh, from police and uh, JPJ mm -hmm. to allow this to be carried out anything beyond that uh, not possible to be carried so, out that's one and the second thing is that uh, uh, we couldn't find a uh, right uh, machineries or it's going to be very expensive to so, allow that to uh, single we have a machinery but but very very expensive because to mm. buy that machine according to my friend may cost million also maybe three to five million that machine and then it may cost uh, something like uh, twenty thousand to thirty thousand a day so mm. this is very, very expensive if you uh, lift it up uh, using uh, one uh, plant eh? mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason so more of not uh, because of the plant uh, in north not like KL we have so many and to bring that particular plant to to, to, to mobilization and demobilization cost is very, very high. So that's the reason why we have divided into segments. When we, even though the design is one, mm -hmm. but they have to come up with a new, the contractor, the Nagatron is a specialist. By virtue of you segmentize the thing, they have to come up with a special connection. Yes. Connection, they call it. Otherwise, that you cannot achieve. Because when they design, it, it's one single entity. You know, when single entity is different when you break it up. Yep. So it's going to a cost to them by doing that but because of the logistic problem as i mentioned to you just now sometimes even though it is best under one uh, execution but mm -hmm. because of a, a constraint in terms of accessibility constraint in terms, mm -hmm. of, uh, constraint in terms of transportation mm -hmm. and then in terms of uh, cost even though there's a cost to be paid for the connector it's still cheaper rather than in one single hoist. Yes. I so see. these are the project manager play a vital role and uh, in the future i believe they're going to be a special consultant just providing skill in managing the projects for the uh, what they call uh, site, especially mm -hmm. for special job. Okay, now right. we go to the uh, uh, the other project. Uh, this project uh, is actually we have uh, three tower, yeah, uh, block A, blocks block B, and uh, block C. It is about uh, twenty eight story. Uh, uh, all uh, all together we have a podium block we have podium block over here uh over this this is a podium block 
and we have the tower itself uh, on top of it. Yeah, this is the tower itself. And they are the same height, three block at a single side, at a single side. So uh, then uh, how actually the contractor plan for the, uh, the utilization of uh, what they call the uh, plant and machineries. If CIQ, I become, uh, I became the, uh, I become the uh, project lead consultant. In here, I become the uh, project manager. Next. So this is about the site. Uh, you can see that uh, the original uh, intentions of the uh, of the uh, planner or the contractor. You can see we have uh, tower crane one, PC in tower crane, tower crane two, tower crane three. Since we have three blocks of uh, uh, of building, they deploy three uh, tower crane, and then this tower crane have their own radius. You can see the radius. Uh, on the uh, circle there, radius of this one and radius of this one. Yeah, one, two, and three. Uh, ideally, you can see also uh, three tower crane could be able to deploy the work due to the problem of the boom capacity. I mean, if you have one crane over here, they cannot service the block A and block B. But if you put at the center here, they find out also they cannot reach the end of the block A, block B, and block C. So they decided to have three. Of course, this is the ideal one, but this is not going to be a cheapest one because they have three separate crane, three separate cost, three separate operator. So uh, this is going to be, we discuss afterwards uh, how this at the end come to be. Next. So the planner, the, uh, this company is a very big company, is a public sector company. The owner of the project also is a, is a quasi government, but the, uh, the, the, contractor who award with the project is a very very big uh, organization so the planner plan the whole thing the planning itself i think uh, uh, for each an individual item they submitted to me something like more than 100 over pages and then we extract from that uh, we found out that the uh, uh, this table denote the types of machinery and its number against the work program produced by the contractor of which the work progress should have reached the tower so that means uh, what we are trying to say in May 21, uh, where they, they, have, they are able to complete the uh, podium, now they're going to build the tower. They start to build the tower. So in May alone, they must have something like 33 numbers of uh, plant or various type as being uh, on the left hand side here. You can see from uh, excavator, right at the mobile crane, tower crane, lorry, trailer, backhoe. How do they do this? They use their program of works, what to be achieved uh, monthly against uh, kinds of work to be carried out. And that they will plot it and plan for the plant and machineries. And of course, they also have another schedule that also provide an information pertaining to the real level needed to support this activity together with the plant and machinery. So as an engineer, you must be able to interpret the program of works and how is actually uh, being used as a tools for you to manage the site in determining the numbers of crane, uh, numbers of equipment to be used against uh, the labor that required and to perform what was actually already planned. So this is another knowledge that you must, uh, you cannot uh, just rely on the, uh, what you call lecture. You must go beyond, dig and dig and dig so that when you go out, you study this, you are able to become a good uh, site personnel or at all become a project manager at site. Next. So this is a histogram uh, showing uh, month to month until the it completion, uh, showing that what kind of plan and then how long is a uh, uh, bill or mach machinery required and what is the total like? As we mentioned just now, throughout the period of time, the plan uh, use is uh, uh, quite call, uh, not that many at the beginning, but very happy one, probably. But towards uh, one third of the end of the project, the, the, the maximum deployment of the plan will be used. So this can be uh, obtained through the uh, uh, planning that we prepared. So this is a very, very interesting from this 
what you know, what kind of plant, then you start study what are the capacity of the plant to undertake. Then you can have study when the plant is supposed to deploy at the site. And then you will study further what would be the best for the plant to be, uh, to be deployed in terms of its capacity. And further you study uh, whether to purchase, to hire, or to lease. And further you want to study the accessibility of the plant to the site, when it's supposed to be uh, come, where is the place supposed to be, and whether that is actually affecting the other work or not, and when it's supposed to come in, when it's supposed to go out, when the material is supposed to be planned so that the plant can be used to utilize again the material, and when is the level supposed to be at the site, and what kind of claim that we can put in so that all the cost that being paid for this kind of plant is actually in tandem with the claim that we want to do with the client. So you can see that the plant and machinery alone, uh, as I mentioned, 20-30% of the cost is uh, uh, costing so much uh, money on the part of the uh, your client. So you have to have this knowledge in order to bring down, mitigate the necessary unproductive uh, plant output and mitigate potentials of delay due to rain, due to an inaccessibility, due to delay in the supply of the material, due to the time whereby the material will not be able to be delivered. All these things must be planned together or the procurement strategy late, cannot. So procurement got to do with the planning, procurement got to do with the labor deployment, procurement got to do with the plan deployment at the site, procurement got to do with the kind of plan we'll be able to leave, to move, and against the financial standing of the of the client and as well as you have to make sure that the financial aspect of it and the cost to the client everything must be done with the ground aim to make sure job can be done uh, expeditiously at the same time at the cost acceptable that bring profit to the uh, employer of yours so i'm uh, very much uh, uh, what i call excited uh, when come to this then if uh, anything at all, you can save the money for the client. You can one day become a contractor yourself and carry out with this kind of exercise. Okay. So uh, during the, as I mentioned to you just now, uh, the client decided that the contractor decided that uh, during the construction of the uh, podium, they use one uh, crane, but they found out these are the area where the crane are unable to provide. These are the, uh, the shortcomings. So what they did was, they used this tower crane and they used a mobile crane to support within the parameter of the building so that area uncovered by the tower crane can be covered by laughing, uh, what you call mobile crane. But to have three is so expensive, they have one, they rather use the laughing uh, mobile crane for the uh, entire uh, what they call uh, podium blocks. Uh, basically, tower crane is, uh, uh, I don't want to go in detail here. This project is basically, uh, as far as the, uh, uh, the what they call the, the podium block is actually uh, IPS components. And then the tower is actually conventional. So it's a, a mix of uh, uh, IBS and conventional. So uh, uh, the tower crane play an important role. The laughing tower item two also play an important role so that uh, the area not be covered by the tower crane will be able to be covered by this uh, mobile crane so that uh, the whole area, uh, they can lift up the uh, component or the panels of the IBS and uh, work perfectly uh, currently. Thanks. So uh, they are using like the one that I mentioned just now in uh, in uh, Bukit Kayutam, same uh, laughing tower crane of 80 ton capacity. And then uh, same also like the other side, they are using uh, loader lorry. Loader lorry is the one who deliver uh, the uh, concrete panel. And then uh, from that, if we hoist it up to the place that they intended to, the rest of it, uh, you may read later. And then they also supported by a mobile crane of 25 ton and mobile crane of 50 ton, depending on the uh, radius uh, of this. If you're going to be further in and they're not able to do it, they use uh, what they call uh, much uh, uh, bigger uh, uh, mobile crane. But at the fringe of the uh, building, they use a much uh, lesser crane. Next. Uh, 
It's a very boring uh, topic probably for you. Huh? Dato, sorry. You mean that um, surrounding the radius, there is a few mobile cranes, not just one, is it? No, not just one. Ah. Big side. We're talking about, about uh, uh, more than three acres. You can imagine that uh, uh, okay. one can... so that's a few. Uh. Yeah, because when the lorry keep on coming in and bring in, then they have to uh, take they take time to yes, yes. put and to fit, you know, mm -hmm. that's the reason why. So uh, probably, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, three or four crane working simultaneously. Yeah. Okay. 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 Laughing Tower crane, 70 ton, 80 ton. This is already, I already discussed to you just now from the other project. You were talking about the capacity, lifting capacity, the radius, and, and whatnot. So they are talking about the very same thing. The one over uh, CIQ, Bukit Kayutam, the purpose is different, but the the function the same is lifting. So the same thing uh, over here of different kind of chart that they want to show it to you, right? Uh, so the, the, the same thing, uh, but a more clearer pictures uh, compared to the other one. Uh, what they're trying to say that what 25 ton uh, against the boom that they are able to carry out against the, uh, against the uh, uh, radius, you can see, uh, this is 25 ton, but very minimal uh, uh, ability to lift. This is uh, 50 ton. The capacity is uh, higher, but the, the higher the boom you utilize, the lower the ability to lift. The bigger the radius, the lower will be the tonnage capacity to undertake it. So this is a simple uh, uh, arithmetic uh, equation, but you must understand this. As I mentioned to you, don't forget, the maximum capabilities of that must be divided by three or at least 2.5 as for safety factor. So if it's shown here 7.5 ton, for instance, this one be divided at by three or 2.7 for 40 meter height. So it may be divided by three. This is about a three, eh? a two, eh? two, two point of a ton only capacity, uh, this one. So if your side, if your side like just now, at the fringe of the, uh, uh, what they call uh, uh, podium, you can do and carry out uh, all this one. But if you go further in, they are not be able to lift uh, very high or very heavy kinds of uh, what they call uh, uh, loading. So you must understand uh, this one. That's the reason why uh, we have to use different kind of uh, crane and uh, different mobile crane for different kind of purpose lifting capacity. Next. Uh, this is also uh, just another uh, explanation of the tower crane. The jeep length is 50 meter, maximum load of 20 ton, at a distance of 23.3. That means from 50 meter, maximum load is 12 ton at the center of the jeep length. So if you go further up, up 50 meter, you can see that the capability of load is only 5.4 ton. But you must divide this again, as I mentioned, divided by 2.5 or 2.7. That means at the very tips of this uh, tower crane, what they can do is only about 1.5 to 2 ton maximum. And at the center of it, maybe we're talking about 4 tons. So this is the uh, methodology, how they, uh, they use it. They, they never or load it beyond that. Otherwise, the crane might be uh, turn, become turnstile, you know. So this is also a factor that have, we have to look into it. The reason why, they come out with a two or two, three tower crane in a single tower block by virtue of the fact that they are not able to carry out a heavy loading beyond what is being designed. So when come to this one, when you actually manufacture uh, or you buy from somebody, from the manufacturer, you must make sure those being delivered to the site must be within this capacity to be lifted out. Otherwise, you have to cut this into pieces. That's going to be very uh, uh, not practical at all. So when you ask them to uh, assemble uh, your product at the factory, you must have in mind the, uh, your crane capabilities. Otherwise, you have to cut that into pieces, then it may at all uh, not suitable for permanent construction. So there's a lot of knowledge actually to be learned and very, very interesting actually from the design part, before you design, you understand the load loading, you understand the static uh, uh, what you call static loading, you understand the mobile loading, you understand the uh, the usage of it, you understand the, what they call, uh, the behavior of the structure between uh, different kinds of material, steel, concrete, or combination of IPS, that kind of thing, that imposing uh, 
a di different kind of challenge for di different kind of soil condition, different kind of degree of uh, uh, what they call uh, substructure, the piling, different kind of types of pile to be used to undertake different kind of load, the spending between column to column, the structure that required and whatnot. And then at the end, and until the day, the types of machineries to be used also has to be taken into consideration what kind of weight of the product, what kind of sizes, and then the, the degree of accessibility and whatnot, and the cost, and about where, when they're going to receive the money for payment. All these make the site, it's very, come very complicated, and all those with a knowledge, engineering-based knowledge, are able to come up with this kind of work. So you can imagine, you have a very tremendous uh, capabilities, tremendous opportunities. If you take this plan alone, you can imagine, you can become a master of this one. You can work this with the uh, what they call plan and machineries and whatnot. So next. So this is the same just now. It's only a chart that uh, the idea is very simple. Uh, as I mentioned just now. Thanks. So at the end, uh, when uh, the podium is completed, they will change the tower crane instead of uh, uh, the one one being at the center, they will deploy back these three tower crane. So they reduce the cost because at the time of doing the podium at the black uh, uh, line there, they don't have to cost so much in uh, Paying the rentals or the, the leasing of it, but for the for the for, uh, for the tower, they deploy back to use three tower crane. So this is how the the contractor look into it, and uh, instead of from the very beginning, they have a three tower crane. Yeah, because the tower crane, if a three tower crane being provided, you can see there's an area that cannot be covered. There's an, a big area cannot be covered, as well at this side. So that's the reason why they use at the center. And then during the podium side, they have all the mobile crane by the fringe of the building. But during uh, tower crane processes, they cannot do that because it's very high and the laughing mobile crane cannot do it. So what they're going to do, because this particular area is not a IBS. It is a, a, what they call a, a traditional construction method. So they can use other method to bring in uh, concrete to this particular area, like using pump. Uh, concrete farm and whatnot. So these are the uh, uh, the ultimate now they are going to do it. So uh, this is uh, I'm, I'm just telling you that uh, uh, from our observation that uh, contractor is actually uh, before and two numbers of laughing tower crane and whatnot how much they can do it when the laughing tower crane are brought in they can increase the productivity. This is only just to show the real results. Next. It's also the same thing. And then uh, I would like also to show you some of the cranes, some of the equipment and plant and machineries being used in this project. Okay, Earth moving, we are using this uh, kind of uh, uh, excavator for our projects. Next. We are also using backhoe. This is normal, uh, most uh, efficient uh, machine uh, ever being designed for site usage. We are also using a lorry dump truck for the uh, earth moving uh, activity. Next. Uh, this is the one uh, uh, tower crane that uh, being used for the podiums. Next. This is the uh, crawler crane, as I mentioned to you, of uh, small capacity. Next. This is the one that I mentioned to you, the 80 tons of the uh, 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 80 tons of the of the uh, side. You can see that uh, uh, this is uh, at the fringe of the building. They can move until this side. You know, uh, this is how how they they do it. Next, uh, this is load chart. Load chart. I don't have to explain. You already aware. Uh, this is a, a concrete pump. They are using a huge uh, uh, concrete pump to deliver the concrete from uh, what it calls a. Uh, uh, concrete truck to the place it's supposed to be. Uh, this is another platform lorry, platform lorry basically to bring in the panels of the uh, IBS components. Next. So that's basically uh, uh, my uh, 
talk today. I hope you, uh, the student uh, don't feel bored. Uh, <laughs> I hope you are uh, still awake uh, because in, in the afternoon. But, yes, uh, it's afternoon. <laughs> uh, this is a very uh, interesting things, and uh, if you're really uh, uh, interested, you should uh, uh, study further on this one. Thank you for all the moment. Thank you, Dato. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, feel free to uh, unmute your mic if you'd like to ask Dato any questions. I believe that uh, most of you will understand because we have uh, went through about a mobile crane before, tower crane. So maybe you can ask Dato more technical questions like your case study. Uh, even, even you want to ask about the first case study, that will also uh, no problem. Okay, it's first one or second one. Any questions so far? Uh, Assalamualaikum Datuk. Assalamualaikum. Uh, saya nak tanya soalan tapi macam soalan ni macam teknikal sikit lah. Saya, saya macam tak faham sikit. Uh, macam contoh kat site tu kita just schedule masa je macam kita planning nak guna mesin apa semua tapi kita kat site tu macam sebagai planning je lah. Lepas tu bila dekat site ni kita macam sama sekali kan dunia penyakit macam ada PKP duduk satu kosong, duduk kosong. So macam tertangguh dekat site tu. So macam mana uh, kontraktor dia nak kejar balik uh, masa yang dia delay dekat site tu Lepas tu dia, ken, dia orang kena schedule balik ke masa yang plan, masa planning tu Okay uh, Jawapan dia mudah saja. Uh, semasa MCO It is uh, under post measure As I my lecture the other day on the uh, construction contract On my first lecture so the contractor will given the extra time to do it. And then uh, EOT, yeah, extension of time being granted to them. So uh, contractor only need to replanning based on the new time frame only. So as far as the work is concerned, they are not able to do it, not because of their wrongdoing. Uh, then uh, EOT being granted and uh, the acts of temporary acts of parliament pertaining to the uh, MCO is valid until this June from last December 2020. So any shortfall uh, will be uh, what you call uh, over overcome by giving the contractor extra times. Losses will be recovered through EOT. So that's basically uh, how they do it. But uh, should they aren't unable to be provided with that one, then uh, the contractor may uh, replanning the whole plant and machineries because not necessarily uh, let's say if you want to uh, fast carry out the work, one tower crane, we have to have two tower crane because uh, site sometimes constrained, unable to carry out that one the way they're supposed to be. So may uh, deploy different kinds of strategy. Uh, for instance, that uh, uh, redesign certain part of it using uh, IPS components uh, to expedite the process so that uh, wet work will not have uh, taken longer time to complete their project, that's one. Second thing that uh, uh, deploy, uh, if at all possible, more machineries. And thirdly, of course, they have to uh, uh, bear the extra cost of delay by uh, LED imposed by the, uh, by the client. So uh, these are basically, if it's in COVID uh, itself, EOT will be granted to them. They have to replanning only uh, the delivery of the uh, machineries to the site, okay? Right, right. Thank you, Daniel, for asking. Daniel, okay. Right, thank you, Dato. Anyone else? Well, I think I see one in the chat box by Iqmal. Iqmal, uh, Dato Iqmal asked that uh, if based on the ICQ Bukit Kayu Hitam case study one, what is uh, roughly the cost for tower crane that have to be spent? Basically, the cost I, for I, tower I crane. You, ICQ, we do not have a tower crane. We are using the uh, mobile crane. Mm. Uh, mobile. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Mobile crane like that may cost you between uh, twelve to twenty thousand a day to rent. That's basically the the, the, the price. So you must uh, uh, not allow the machine to be long at the side. Uh, it has to be planned uh, in such a way. If you're talking about twenty thousand a day or fifteen thousand a day, ten days is already one hundred and fifty thousand. So mm -hmm. in a month you already pay uh, something like uh, three hundred uh, to four hundred, uh, four hundred over thousand. So if you don't deploy it properly. It's not easy, but if you start demobilize 
uh, sent back to uh, Kuala Lumpur, it's not easy for them to come back because the numbers of this uh, plant and machinery are not easily available up north there. And then mm -hmm. if it is in the central, we have to fight against the LRT, MRT uh, currently who are using a lot of this machinery. So we're having that problem uh, previously. So once we have it, we must make sure enough thing to do within a short period of time. That's why when they are there, they work until late at 12 at night to ensure mm. that the, uh, the uh, like just now also, uh, what we mentioned by a student, one way of doing is extra hour, extra overtime work to catch up the losses in time. So that's what we, we do it. You know, we have to fight against uh, the availability. We have to fight against the productivity. And at the same time, we are going to fight against the cost of uh, hiring. So it is not our crane. It is a, a mobile crane for 80 ton capacity. Okay, but thank you for this uh, question. All right, thank you. One, yeah? yeah, there's one more. Uh, uh, PM Dr. Andre asked that uh, for construction in a remote location without good road access, which option would be better or cheaper to improve the road quality first or just doing everything on site? No more IBS or free cars. Yeah, I have done, uh, I, uh, I'm lucky one, I mean, one of the lucky, luckiest consultants in the country, whereby I was given a project, a uh, school project uh, for the West Coast from uh, Johor up to the up to Kedah and uh, uh, what I call uh, Lengkawi, uh, mm -hmm. all together 144 schools. Uh, that include uh, some kinds of uh, in kampung, you know, in kampung, mm -hmm. whereby uh, the road is so small that uh, not possible sometimes to use a certain kind of machineries. Yeah, like Batu Pahat also Pariraja. If you go uh, up to the river. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know what I mean. It's not easy. Even uh, to even even uh, at Pago, so there's a lot of kampung school, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 that's not permit because of the road is so small. Yep. yep. And then uh, the weight also of the uh, uh, transportation may cause damage to the to the road. So when uh, when I do that that kind of thing, we uh, we start thinking uh, of combination, a combination of uh, IBS and. Uh, uh, tra uh, traditional conventional concrete system uh, to reduce the uh, the damage to the road, and then uh, we also reduce this uh, the component uh, uh, size of mm -hmm. the uh, IBS so that it a more uh, less weight, and then uh, we bring in by small lorry, and then uh, that's the way. So we give them more time compared to the one in town where accessibility is good. So that uh, it's longer completion uh, period. So it's uh, more costly because of transportation issues and whatnot. So the school uh, of the same school done in, uh, let's say in one kampung, Sungai Rambut, or Talang Bunot in uh, Balik Raja, is a cost maybe 20% more because of the transportation cost. Again, if you do it at the uh, Balik Raja itself, so these are the thing that uh, are my real experience. We cannot damage uh, the road because this is a livelihood of the kampung folk. So we must bring in nothing more than the small lorry that carry uh, out the kelapa sawit for them. That is the criteria for me to convince the authority to allow this thing to happen. So I go to the uh, tempat timbang uh, kelapa sawit and how many tons, three tons that can make and we just don't bring more than that to the site. So this is the criteria we use. So brother, I hope that uh, answer your question. Of course, you have to pay uh, more expensive. Yeah. Dr. Andre, is it okay? Is it, uh, does it answer your question? All right. Noted. Okay. Yeah, thank you, so, Dr. we have one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy asks, of late, there were frequent reported tower crane accidents at construction sites. What is your take on the root cause of this related accident? Could it be the operator competency or machinery? Okay. Good one, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because we want to know more beyond what is reported in the newspaper or TV. That's good as a, as a technical person. I do not have the uh, actual report why this thing happened, but uh, uh, one of the reasons is that uh, it does some of the uh, foundation is actually uh, uh, when it is being connected to the foundation, it is not well designed, you know, as with the tower crane when you you connected it to the foundation, uh, give way. 
because I have a, a problem of roof structure, for instance, uh, that collapsed in my project eh, uh, due to the uh, unproperly uh, secured to the uh, J bolt that being uh, embedded into the concrete. So they give away, uh, the thread is give away, then uh, the crane is uh, uh, fell, no? That, that's one. The second part of it, uh, the boom capacity is actually sometimes, as I mentioned to you, you have to understand this now, the, the maximum uh, probability is 12 ton at the centers of the, uh, of the Jeep. Then uh, they bring in something like uh, six to seven ton of, of the uh, of the material, whereas you have to divide it by 2.7 or 2.5 or divided by three. So over a period of time, you keep on using that. So that this particular crane somehow rather lose its ability to undertake this load. So that also may cause uh, what they call uh, some uh, mishap that happen. The other part is that uh, externalities. You know, externalities means uh, uh, when you carry out the crane, uh, the belts. Uh, give way, the bell are not able to undertake, that also causing uh, uh, a problems uh, to the side. And sometimes it hits certain things. When they move the crane, uh, the booms, it hits certain things of the structure, temporary structure at the side. That also cause uh, instability to the, to the crane tower. Then that also may cause that one. And uh, there, are, there are a lot of other causes, human factors also. Sometimes you go up there, you, you try to be at the tower crane, you have the experience, go up and stay there for two hours. You know, stay there for two hours, doing nothing and concentrate. You cannot, uh, what it calls, uh, you have to be 100% concentrating because it's very dangerous for you. And sometimes you cannot see, you're relying on the information provided by third party. This also may cause problems. Wrong um, signal given, say down and down. How much down going to be? Five feet, ten feet, left, right, center, that kind of thing. Sometimes while smoking down there, they, 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 they mistakenly give a wrong information. They suppose to say right, they said it left, for instance. And on the left, there's a people there. They also may cause some. This is common thing that happen. Or while they have their drink, see if they drink, they also sometimes make a wrong uh, instruction. Or sometimes they are foreigners. Their language also sometimes causing problems. So there's a lot of reason. And that's one, one of the reason, a uh, few reasons that I can cite it based on my experience. So the one what happened actually uh, appear in newspaper and TV, I don't know much about it. So that's my answer. Thank you, Dato. Yeah. Right. So uh, Arisa, Arisa, she asks, uh, Dato, I have a question. I wonder does scammers exist in this industry? If yes, how do we overcome it? For example, we want to get machinery from China. Then how uh, does the payment how is the payment made in order to avoid fraud? Do we need to make full payment or deposit? Wow. wow. She's like a businessman, nah, she? Yeah, the soalan is eh, bagus. Bagus lah. Nah, he really, she or he? It's she, I think it's she. I think yeah. Arisa wants to take up the, the, you know, you were mentioning about the demand in KL. Sometimes it's very hard to find machinery, right? I think she wants to open business already. Oh, that's good. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Yeah, I have my experience uh, uh, procure myself uh, uh, things from China. I also uh, uh, appointed as a quantity surveyor for a hotel project, procure uh, material from China. So based on my experience, uh, China is a very developed country. China development is, uh, is a very fast and you will be surprised uh, 20 years ago, I went there. There's a lot of things that I would like to complain. But uh, after uh, 20 years or back, I, I have been to China. I have a lot of complaints about my country. Yeah? Yeah, it's a two different things. The first visit, I like to a lot of complain about them. The second visit, third visit, fourth visit, I have to, a lot of complain about my country pertaining to the development of infrastructure. So they are very good, efficient. Of course, they are so big. Uh, they are not... Uh, uh, some in a big town, fantastic. Of course, uh, the rural area, we still have got a problem. That one is expected. So when we went to China, uh, first of all, I advise we must have a very good contact uh, down there, reliable contact down there. That's very important. Second thing, we must go and visit and see what we actually want to purchase. We must really see the real thing of it so that it will be developed the real thing. At the time I want to purchase this uh, 
LED board for advertisement. So we went a few factories. We really see how they manufacture this, and we really see how the order made uh, came from all over the world. And we see the book, we see the product, we see the contract, we see everything. And we also go and visit the bank uh, that uh, this transaction to be uh, passed on from our local bank to their local their local bank. And we also have uh, a Malaysian who have a, a reside over there because I'm married, in, uh, married to mainland China. And they actually become our, uh, what they call, uh, connector, uh, connecting us with them. They will check everything before it being uh, sealed uh, in the container to ensure that uh, uh, everything that we expect, everything that we order really being delivered in the container. Once being sealed in the container, then at least we feel safe when arriving in here. So as far as money is concerned, which is between our bank and their bank, like last time, uh, Bank of China, which is operating throughout the world. So we use that. So we operate through a uh, Maybank, or we go to uh, Bank of China, who actually operating in the country, to the uh, to carry out this uh, exercise. So that is my advice. How do you do it that way? Or the other option is that make them pay uh, when it's arrived here through the agent that they appoint in Malaysia. Now, there's a lot of agent that have been appoint uh, they appoint in Malaysia to sell their product. That, that could be the easiest way so that uh, you only pay when you see the material being delivered. So that's my experience on that. Okay, are we over? Thank you, Dato. I think uh, Eresa should might ask about the payment. What about the payment method? That's why I said payment, as I mentioned to you, is a bank to bank. A oh, bank to bank, okay. A bank to bank. I mean, they have China, China bank here. Oh. They also have China Bank over there. I see. So we can use that as a base of whatever receiving here is from the same company. So we, we are quite safe using that method. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Is it benefited? Is it uh, uh, reliable uh, from... Uh, the doctor, I'm sure, has uh, taught you a lot of things. But I just want to extend from what Dr. lectured yes. all to the real world, how actually that thing being done. Uh, then uh, to, to make you further believe that it is really being deployed as being lectured by, to, uh, to you by, by, by her. So uh, there's nothing much uh, fantastic. It is much very much fantastic how you plan and how you mitigate the risk and cost and time to the client. That is the most challenging and selecting the right equipment for the right exercise or job to be undertaken and given and uh, how you control the machine and the operator to produce the maximum output that you expected from the plant and the people who operate it. This is a more challenging and of course the finance in opening or rent it out or through a leasing uh, which may strain the client as far as money is concerned. So this is a uh, uh, a combination of understanding the plan, combination of understanding the technical uh, spec of the of the plan, understanding the capacity, understanding the maintenance cost, understanding the operating cost, understanding how to operate, and understanding the output and understanding the best to deploy in order to bring the best output out of the machineries. This is more important and relevant for you as a uh, what you call uh, engineering technologies. Uh, I think that we probably, uh, I thought about it. Is it okay? All right. Thank you, Dato. Uh, I think we are really, um, you know, it's like, I think we are all uh, speechless when it comes to, you know, like understanding there are like so many areas that we need to consider, right? So even from the case study that you actually uh, uh, proposed and uh, sorry, case study that you actually presented, uh, we really do see that there's a lot of things like, for example, logistics, you know, certain things need to be sacrificed, certain things need to, uh, they, we have to be flexible to give and take. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dato, for helping us to see things from different perspective, right? Uh, I think if there is uh, more chances in the future, it will be even good to even see how to calculate the cost, you know, even in more detail, right? So, um, so uh, is there any more question? If not, we may... Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's already. good. Yeah, I think you really need to give that to a rest <laughs> full day, right? Okay, so um, right.
Right, thank you very much, Nato. We really appreciate you. Right, so uh, can I just uh, give the time back to the MCs? All right. Okay, so thank you very much to Dr. Peniel and our honorable guest speaker, Dato S. Azukifli, for the wonderful and fruitful sharing of today's lecture. Uh, it is indeed a great opportunity to have you on this evening. I would like to remind all the audience to fill up the Google Form link. It's available in the chat, book, chat box for e-certificate purpose. Before we dismiss, let's have a photography session first. Dear audience, kindly turn on your camera. <laughs> 